As you know, uh, I have a twin brother, and he was made bishop on this week, on Tuesday. I'm just joking. It's a joke. <laughs> Do you see the picture of our bishop? People said we looked the same, because we went to, I went to the place, the seminary, where he was in charge of. So people would confuse us. Well, he's 20 years older than me, so I don't know how this is possible, but I must look bad for my age. But I have a twin brother. We sound the same. We kind of look the same. We have the same features. But people confuse us with our voices. If I call my parents, they don't know unless they look at the phone. But if I call them on their home phone, they don't know who's calling them because we have the same voice. So I want to give you a test. If you'll excuse me, I want to give you a test. And I want you to listen to... Uh, one of these, uh, listen to both of these, okay? First one. This is your pastor, Father Timothy Saad. Okay. Did you get that? This one. This is your pastor, Father Timothy Saad. Which one is me? One or two? If you say one, raise your hand. If you say two, raise your hand. You know my voice. No, you don't. They're both me. Oh, that first one, that doesn't sound like you at all. That second one, it doesn't sound like you at all. That second one's definitely you. No, they're both me because I asked my brother to do it and he refused to. So he's smart. He's smart. Because he doesn't like when I do things like this. Anyway, so... So, you thought you knew. You thought you know my voice. My parents actually, they surprised, as they like to do, and they came to 8 o'clock Mass, and they both said they thought it was number one. So they don't even know. They have no clue. <laughs> so, you think you know my voice. Jesus says in the Gospel, my sheep, they know my voice, and they follow me. Do we? Do we know his voice? Actually, his voice is pretty distinctive. He teaches us. He tells us. But we choose other voices. We choose other voices. We choose other shepherds to lead us. And we might think, oh, no, we don't. Oh, but yes, we do. I'll speak for myself. There are lots of shepherds running around who try to disguise their voices to be like the voice of our Savior. Lots of them. Maybe they're in our culture. Maybe it's the voice of the majority in the culture who say, yes, do this, don't do that. Maybe it's a voices in our political leaders. Maybe we have a political shepherd instead of a divine shepherd, and we follow them. Maybe it's the voices of our family, or our friends, who are wonderful. Doesn't mean we don't love them, but they're not our shepherds. There is a true shepherd. And in all of these areas of life, there may be participants in the life of the shepherd, people who desire to walk with the shepherd, but none of them who have laid down their lives for you and for me. None of them. And yet, I'm willing to cast my lot with one of those shepherds a lot of times. How? Well, my brother and I once woke up when we were on vacation at 1 a.m. to go to a taping of The Price is Right. To stand in line for seven hours to go to a taping of a game show. Who was my shepherd? Don't you? Bob Barker, who said that. Definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> there were many years where that was the case. No. He's going to be 100. Did you know that? Anyway, <laughs> sad. So, okay. Or I once sat through a two-and-a-half-hour rain delay at a baseball game for the Pittsburgh, Pir for the Pittsburgh Pirates, two-and-a-half hours. Who's my God? Who's my shepherd? I once sat through a five-degree football game with the Pittsburgh Steelers on uh, the weekend after New Year's. Five hours. Five, or three and a half hour game 
five degrees, who's my shepherd? Who am I willing to follow? Yet if my God said, follow me outside in five degrees and wait with me for three and a half hours, would I do it? I don't know. Would I sit through three and a half, two and a half hour rain delay? I don't know. Rain delay with God. There's no rain, rain delay with God. There's just raining. But would I sit with him in the rain for two, two hours, two and a half hours? I don't know. Would I get up at 1 a.m. and spend seven hours with him? I would hope so. If I knew it was God, if I knew it was his voice, right? But we a lot of times follow the shepherd who we choose and follow them. Because their voice sounds really comforting. Their voice sounds, oh, it sounds good. And we follow we mistake the voice. But the good news is, brothers and sisters, you followed the shepherd to where you're sitting right now. You followed the good shepherd so that he may give you his life. That doesn't make us better than anybody else, but it makes us understand who we are following. Because in this place, you will receive eternal life. None of those other things, none of those other areas that we follow will we receive eternal life. None of those shepherds bring us anywhere where he can. And yet we follow them. We throw our lot in with them. We put a lot of money into them. We do all these things. But none of them can give us anything. Jesus tells us the other things that consume us, even while they may be good, are thieves and robbers because they destroy and take away eternal life from us. Because we are seeking eternal life in things of this world. Not possible. But here we are on this awful day when a lot of people stayed in bed. But you followed the voice of your Savior to receive his life. The only thing today, the only person today who can give you that. And you are here. And praise be to God for that. At this Mass and this week, let us... Ask for clarity so that we can hear the voice of our Savior, the voice of our Shepherd, and have the courage to follow Him when there are so many other imposters out there who seek to let us follow them. They lead us sometimes into sin, sometimes into good things, but never into eternal things. Only He does that. Let us pray that we may hear Him and follow Him on this Sunday in which we say we will follow the Good Shepherd.